Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Strategic Command World War II, World at War. This is part 13 of our Let's Play series as the Allies. It is January of 1941, France has fallen to the Germans, and so has Poland, the Low Countries, and uh, Norway and Denmark. With that being said, I think we have uh, dissuaded the Germans from an early invasion of the British Isles, uh, and uh, we only have a couple of land units in, in, in the British Isles, uh, but nonetheless we see no sign that the Germans are planning to invade England. We have sent warships along the Channel Coast to check on the ports. You can see here Amsterdam, Antwerp, Le Havre, Cherbourg, and uh, Brest are all empty of enemy landing craft, so it is unlikely that the Germans would be able to bring any landing craft forward. Also, we did scout out Bremen this turn as well, and there is nothing there. Our ships perhaps will be damaged by enemy bombing raids if there are any German bombers left in Western Europe, uh, but if they're not and they do stay there, then they will take a toll on the German economy, because if you're there adjacent to an enemy port, they reduce that port's supply by one, and I think industrial output as well. Uh, so that would be nice. Meanwhile, in North Africa, the Africa Corps just arrived uh, in western Libya last turn. The British had been driving westward across the Libyan desert. They destroyed the Italian army at Tobruk. They have taken that important strategic city, and they are threatening Benghazi as well. Uh, but the Africa Corps, again, has arrived, so we'll see how things play out there. A sizable number of British troops are still diverted here in the south. Uh, they have taken the capital of uh, Ethiopia at Addis Ababa. Uh, but they are uh, not yet done dealing with the Italian menace here. They're driving on Mogadishu, and an Italian corps remains in the desert there. Um, I mean, as soon as those troops are done, that will free up an army and two infantry corps to move north to Egypt to reinforce the forces there against the Germans in Africa. Meanwhile, the uh, Mediterranean fleet, if you will, is also participating in these actions. In this most recent turn, uh, participated in bombing the supplies at uh, Benghazi, uh, as well as um, uh, launching some air raids against the Africa Corps, although those were largely unsuccessful and cost us quite a few planes. Both the air groups and these carriers are well under strength. We'll see if the Italian fleet comes out to play in our reduced state. You can see our cruisers, our battleships, our, our subs, all here are well below full strength, and our air complements as well are only at 40% each. So this could be an ideal time for the Axis to strike out against us, but we will see. My hope is that by reducing the port at Benghazi uh, and also by threatening Tripoli, we will hinder Axis supply in the region, uh, and that will potentially uh, limit the ability to move the Africa Corps very effectively. Uh, meanwhile, the Chinese theater is still a slog. We have been continuing our offensives in the south and doing a fair bit of damage to the Japanese 21st and 3rd uh, Corps and armies, uh, as well as the Japanese 17th Korean Army uh, here to the north of Hong Kong. Uh, with that being said, we have taken casualties, but we are on the advantage there. Meanwhile, in central China, the advantage is flipped. The Japanese bombing raids have seriously hindered our soldiers. We've fallen back a little to a new little Maginot line that we've built using our engineers uh, here just to the west of Cheng Chao, uh, but uh, we'll see if that is able to withstand serious enemy punishment or not. Uh, we have had isolated successes driving back the 34th Japanese army with severe losses, uh, but the Japanese, as they continue to grow stronger and more uh, technologically advanced, uh, could threaten our soldiers as well. Uh, we have two corps in the north near here at Pao Tao, which are in good defensive terrain, but are not dug in at all. There are two Japanese armies opposing them, uh, so that could be a problem should the Japanese decide to make it one. With that being said, that's going to really do it. We've already done our January turn. Uh, the Soviet Union is not yet at war. We are trying to build up a defensive position here against the Soviets uh, up to the north to Riga, where we were defending a little bit of a fortification here between Dogfils and Riga, and Riga itself. Uh, but we lack some troops to fill out that defensive line. Uh, and it remains to be seen whether it's a good idea to leave our troops in long, you know, drawn out defensive positions. That being said, that's enough of me rambling here. Uh, oh, oh, the Axis also have invaded Greece, although they have not yet uh, reduced Greece. And that's the situation as we move forward into February. Let's see what the German turn has in store for us. Um, Greek morale is boosted by the presence of British troops in Greece, so we did send a British garrison unit to Athens to try and help out. We get, like, I think a thousand morale points for doing that. Axis raiders are disrupting convoys uh, between Canada and the UK. UK is developing new levels of logistics and heavy bombers. Americans are reporting progress in the development of advanced tanks. Uh, they've also developed uh, heavy bombers in level one. We're doing a lot of R&D with the Americans because they can't really spend their money on a lot else. We could build up more modern forces so they'd be ready to strike as soon as they're at war. 
uh, but we have elected to go more technology-based. Uh, China's income 160, USSR's income 109, uh, minor allies 5, Great Britain 287, and India, which has just joined the war, 108. India should be a nice uh, little addition to our uh, regional strength there. Basically, a wor almost a core worth of money per turn. Um, Italian subs making a move to try and go after this battleship of ours. Uh, they did drive the battleship back. We'll see if the Italian Navy comes out in any sort of meaningful strength other than just the subs. So far, not yet. Japanese are shifting some armies to the south here of Nanjing, attacking our core here to the east of Changsha. Did a little bit of damage, but not much else yet. I'm really hoping we can finish this Japanese army off here to the east of Pakhoi, as well as uh, start to degrade the core here at Pakhoi. I'd love to drive south toward Hankou and, uh, you know, beat them up a bit. Meanwhile, German bombers in France. Some Stukas there doing some damage to some of our shipping in the channel to a cruiser there. Japanese army is being attacked here. Or sorry, a uh, Chinese army being attacked here to the east of Chengchou. Successfully, too, unfortunately. Japanese have advanced toward our Maginot Line, and they have done some damage to our troops there. Our core to the west of Peking also suffers some damage. Fortunately, the attack out of... Canton failed, as well as the attack out Pakhoi, so those are free uh, casualties to the enemy. The German Africa Corps has launched a wide flanking maneuver here, wide of Benghazi, and driven back a core of our infantry that was defending uh, the flank of the British 7th Armor here. And now the German recon units have swung in behind Benghazi as well, and the British 7th Armor, just like that, is cut off, while this uh, British infantry corps has suffered major damage. So we'll have to figure out how best to deal with that. But that is concerning, to say the least. Our one really strong unit here is now surrounded, and next turn will be without supply. We can probably pull it back enough to get it back into supply. But if the Germans maneuver again aggressively, that may, uh, may render any maneuver moot. Meanwhile, Greek morale suffers as Prime Minister Alexandros uh, Korzes commits suicide. I'm kind of surprised the Germans have not aided the Italians in any way to this point in the invasion of Greece. And we also have not seen the Yugoslavian uh, coup uh, either. So the Chinese Fifth Army is destroyed. Greek morale suffers. That's kind of concerning, actually. Meanwhile, the USSR has a new infantry corps coming online. That's good for us. We can extend the line here. Now we need two, two more units to get our, get our defensive line to the sea at Riga. Still February 41, We're really, I'm really hoping the, uh, the Germans don't uh, launch Barbarossa early in the spring of 41, but if they're not going to invade Yugoslavia, that's certainly a possibility. Wintry weather over the channel makes uh, offensive operations there more or less impossible for our air units. Reinforce this tack bomber up to full strength. British have 277 points here. Are these guys without supply? This Italian army is without supply. Granted, this Greek army isn't much better. Can we upgrade these guys? We can upgrade these armies' infantry weapons. It's probably more than I plan to spend on the Greeks, but... Switch these guys. Nice. Some casualties here on the uh, Italian troops at Ionian. I can't believe the Italians haven't advanced into northern Greece, which is undefended at this time. Meanwhile, the Africa Corps... Oh, shit. These guys can't move. Boy. All right. Let's try and bombard Benghazi as a port that will give us forward supply if we can take it. Surprisingly, this armored unit isn't... Oh, it is out of supply. Alright, there we go. So we managed to take... Or we should manage to take Benghazi. Not quite, I guess. Reinforce these guys. We can use our tactical bombers against the recon troops. That's actually a very good result. Move our own troops into this vicinity. And 
threaten their supply. Haven't managed to take Benghazi, surprisingly. Um, do I have any nearby troops? I was hoping to bring troops in. Benghazi is surrounded, but we haven't been able to actually take it. I don't have any troops. Meanwhile, the battleship Valiant will bombard the German troops here to the west of Benghazi. Same for our heavy cruisers, mainly just to try and hurt their morale. Nice. Set mode. Pull our carriers back to Tobruk. Sweet. To try and avoid enemy air. I just took some damage. Damn it. Apparently my planes can't reach that far. My cruisers also can't shoot at enemy subs. My own subs will move into the region. My destroyers will also race westward here. Try and shield these battleships from enemy attacks. So we've got two more destroyers into the Mediterranean this turn. Um, let's pull this guy back over here. Move our fighter too. Okay, so as it stands, all right, trying to shield these capital ships from enemy uh, subs. We'll move this Greek cruiser in just as a distraction. So we've done some damage to the Africa reconnaissance unit here. The Africa armored unit is is largely untouched. I'm not going to attack it with special forces, but maybe it'll be a bit of a diversion. Our South African troops are, have arrived, but they're not really in a good position. The First Corps also is there. Supply could be better. We are building the port of Tobruk back up, I think. I have to double check. That's the situation in the desert. Mogadishu is the capital of the Italian forces still in sort of East Africa. All right, so we just finished off that Italian Corps. So, Italian East Africa is largely doomed. The uh, one remaining strong force of an uh, Italian corps was just destroyed this turn. Mogadishu, if it doesn't fall next turn, will probably fall the following turn. I just attacked it with that corps to try and reduce their fortifications slightly, because infantry attacks do reduce fortifications. Can't reinforce either of these units. I guess I'll go ahead and put these guys on transports. They're not full strength, but... Move these guys to French, free French territories here. Also, we'll start to build up these free French forces near Point de Nord. And we'll throw this South African headquarters unit on a transport as well. We'll move them to Boma. Both these guys are in port, which hopefully makes them less likely to actually be attacked by the enemy. Um... Okay, so Africa will be getting badly needed reinforcements before too long. Meanwhile, the Russian front is... Can we purchase more Russian units? Another core, it's another 150. We'll do it. I need to buy two more units, basically, to put them in Riga and west of Riga, and then we'll, have, then we'll kind of rethink what we're doing here. These guys are fortifying there, so hopefully we'll have that new fort built. I may be trying to defend too far forward in Russia, we'll see. Uh, meanwhile, the Americans and the, the British still have 85 points. Not enough to buy a ton, but we did, I think, reinforce some important units to get reinforced. Uh, these troops here down in Malaya could use a headquarter unit. Part of me wonders if it's better just to pull these guys back to the border of Singapore, make our stand there. 
Uh, meanwhile, in China, we managed to destroy the 21st Japanese army here in China. So that's a good result for us. Meanwhile, I think we can cut these guys off in Canton. Nice. Alright, so with the troops in Canton, the 17th Korean army here in southern China are now also cut off. We'll pull this core back, I think. Maybe we'll attack first. Ooh, not, not two. I'll, I'll take those losses. Nice. Very nice. We just did some serious damage to the 12th Japanese army here in central China to the west of Nanjing. Took out 70% of its strength. We also destroyed a Chinese or a Japanese army here south near Pakhoi. Um... And we'll see if we can remove the third Chinese core that's holding Pekoi itself, although that's a port, so they do a better supply than some of the other troops. Nice. This first Japanese paratrooper raiding group is probably too far advanced for its own good. Four casualties there. Three casualties here. And it's gone. The only bad thing is this Japanese army here is uh, is a problem that we have to deal with. Um, in the north, I think we just reinforce these guys. Hope that the bad weather slows them down a little bit. Spending all our Chinese money on reinforcements this turn. Okay. Wish I could upgrade this unit. I'll leave them in place there. Can we set them to fortify? The problem is I don't know what to fortify with now. All right, so we just rebuilt that entire core here to the west of Yichang. So that's a good result for us. Meanwhile, I can't upgrade these troops because they're adjacent to the enemy. Which kind of sucks. I don't know if, like, special forces units are worthwhile of swapping these guys out of the front line. I'm going to do it. I guess we'll see what happens. Oh, really? They can do two damage? They do lose some casualties, but that was a pretty effective attack, I have to say. So the central expeditionary Chinese force here, or Japanese force, is down 40% of its strength. You know, all these guys are in Changchao itself. They've got good supply, but their morale is really low. For whatever reason, the Chinese troops, despite quite a lot of success, their morale in general is pretty low. But I'm very happy with that turn. That was a, a successful turn, I think. Uh, we did a lot of damage to one Japanese army here, the 12th. The 34th could decide to rush forward and try and attack Henyang directly if they actually have the movement points. The train there may not be ideally suited to it, or the 15th. If they do that, that would throw a bit of a wrench into our plans. They'd really be getting into the rear behind us, but they'd also be exposing them, their own their own flank and rear, so that would not be perhaps the soundest move. I'm hoping we can finish off the 17th Korean army of the Japanese in Canton next turn, and then we can destroy one army in two turn, two armies in two turns. That'd be very nice. We also destroyed a Japanese paratrooper unit here in central China. That's another very good result for us this turn. Um, I think that about does it for the Chinese theater, though. I don't have any more money to do anything else, and I've used all my troops who can move. Um, meanwhile, we've already done the British stuff. India is the one, one unit we haven't done anything with. Probably should build an Indian army, right? Or maybe I should research with the Indians. Where are they at right now? They're at level one infantry weapons, so that's good. Um, Anti-aircraft research should probably be bumped up. 
But what does 170 get us for the Indian troops? Oops. So, Indian troops. We can research core with infantry level one. I think we'll do that. I, I could use some more units. By the way, if you hear thunder or get any static, I apologize. I am recording in the midst of a thunderstorm. So, yeah. The Greek front is largely still static. I really would like... I, these Ionian troops should be really poorly supplied. Like, maybe next turn they'll be without supply, and then we can just rush and destroy them. If we take a look, actually, of the uh, reports here look at the graphs, and we look at national morale. The Italian national morale has taken some hits. It's down to 81. The Germans are very strong at 117. The Japanese are at 88. I think their losses in China are, are hurting. You can see their casualties, their loss in units vastly exceeds their collected income this turn of uh, over 540 worth of, of units lost. Um, if we take a look at the... Well, they're still at 100 for the... Uh, is that the Indians? The Nationals Chinese are at 82%. The MPP losses this turn so far are actually less than the income. Uh, the Soviets are not engaged. The Americans not engaged. The French are out of the war. The British are at 95%. Really use more income for them. Convoy losses. Took a bit of a spike last turn, but overall they're pretty low. So yeah. So that's the situation right now. Um, the British still have a bit of money to spend. I'm going to use a, use it on reinforcing some of our naval assets here. So we rebuilt half of a cruiser here. This was the FNLEF Triumph, which was given to the Free French Naval Forces. And then we also rebuilt a uh, light cruiser over here. We do have a light cruiser in the channel that I'm actually going to move to a slightly safer destination in case the enemy does decide to take advantage of its weakened state by bombing it. Meanwhile, this destroyer... I guess they can stay where they are. These guys can go to Cromarty. Okay. So I think that's it for this turn. North Africa is tenuous. It's an iffy situation. We'll have to see how it plays out. Hopefully we can start getting supplies to these tanks here, which are going to be completely out of supply and can't even move to take Benghazi. The WDF army would also like to take Benghazi. We'll see what the Germans do. Interestingly, their units are also very low on supply, and they have no direct roadway to where they are currently, so I imagine their supply situation will get worse, not better, as long as the uh, 7th Armor controls this crossroads here. Also, without their headquarters units moving more, for, more for, further forward. But that's all for next time. Um, these episodes are ending up to be a little bit shorter than, I think, my Axis episodes, where there was perhaps more to do at this stage in the war. Certainly, they will get longer as we move closer to war. Um, but with that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and research ground attack weapons. Uh, but with all of that being said... Uh, I think in terms of this episode, we're going to go ahead and wrap up here. Hope you guys are enjoying the series. As always, let me know your thoughts below. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.